Good, so in this video we're going to talk about the relationship between the derivative of f of x and the inverse function, uh, f inverse of x. And so, um, let's think about this first. So, uh, suppose that AB is on the graph of f. Then, oh, let's also say, and f prime at a is some slope, let's say, m. Then, uh, for the inverse, remember we just uh, flipped the x and y. b a is on the graph of f inverse of x, right? And... Uh, the derivative there, uh, let's see, how am I going to write that? Let's say f inverse prime at the point b, that's the input, is going to be 1 over m. Okay, so it's going to be the reciprocal. And now, uh, let's see if we can prove that. Proof. Well, we know that... Uh, for a function and its inverse, we know that the composition of the two functions is equal to x, right? And so if I differentiate everything in sight here, uh, that would be the derivative of the outside function with the inside function stuck in here times the derivative of the inside function. That's going to be equal to 1, right? And so uh, that means that the derivative, or the derivative of the inverse evaluated at f, at f of x is 1 over f prime of x, right? So in terms of our notation up here, if x equals a and f of x equals b, or f of a equals b, maybe I should write it that way, what we're saying here is that uh, f inverse, the derivative, evaluated at b is 1 divided by the derivative of f evaluated at a. Good. And so this is a summary of that. And it's probably easier to remember it this way, right, kind of geometrically. Um, and so we're going to use this uh, in just a second when we're talking about the trig functions. But let's just take a look at a regular example, maybe first example. Uh, if f of 3 equals 1 and f prime of 3 equals 2, find the equation of the tangent line to f inverse of x. Of course, we have to assume that f inverse of x exists. At which point we're going to, are we going to do that? At the point blank. Uh, well, if I know that this this statement right here says that the point 3, 1 is on the graph. So therefore, 1, 3 is on the graph of f inverse. And uh, the derivative of f inverse at 1 is equal to 1 over f prime of 3, that's what we just proved up here. And so that's going to be 1 half. Good. And so therefore my equation of my line is just going to be y minus 1. Oops, I'm looking at the wrong point. y minus 3 equals 1 half times x minus 1. Very good. Alright, so now we're going to take a look at the derivatives of some of the inverse trigonometric functions. Derivatives of inverse trig functions. Alright, so let's start off with y equals the sine of x. Now remember that the sine of x looks like this, right? And so therefore we have to restrict 
the domain on the sign in order for this function to be one-to-one. -one. And the usual restriction is to take the function uh, from there to there, <laughs> which would be minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. Okay, and so now the function is 1 to 1, so x is between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2, and then y would be between minus 1 and 1. Right, and so the inverse function, uh, y equals the inverse sine of x, which is also the same thing as arc sine of x. You could use either notation. Well, we know that the y, uh, the x value is going to be between minus 1 and 1, your domain, and your range then is between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. Okay, now what is the relationship between the, uh, I know what the derivative of the sine function is, but I don't know what the derivative of inverse sine is. So to get the derivative of the inverse sine, I'm just going to rewrite it first. I'm going to rewrite it uh, using the sine of y equals x. And now y is a function of x. Right, so differentiating as a function of uh, y, differentiating y as a function of x, right, we would have cosine of y of x, I can put y of x here, uh, times uh, dy over dx, that's the chain rule, right? Equals 1. And so uh, now I see that dy over dx is equal to 1 over the cosine of y. However, let's stop for a second. I want the function, I want the derivative to be in terms of x, not in terms of y. So somehow I need to convert this expression into an expression that deals, or that's in terms of x. So how am I going to do that? It's right, right here. This is defining a triangle. Which triangle? That statement defines a triangle, a right triangle, where you can put the angle y on either side there. Let's just put the y there. And so this is, uh, the x over 1 then is going to be opposite over hypotenuse. So we can write that as 1, that is x, and so then the third length of the third side by the Pythagorean theorem would be the square root of 1 minus x squared. And now do you see how we're going to convert this now back to x? Because the cosine of y here is, oops, uh, 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. Good. Therefore, uh, if y equals the inverse sine of x, dy over dx is equal to 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared, which is kind of an odd expression there. Good. All right. Uh, so we would do the same thing for the cosine. Um, maybe we can do one more. How about the tangent, inverse tangent function? So again, just as a reminder, um, if we have y equals the tangent of x, right, and we look at the plot, we restrict the inverse or the tangent function to be between pi halves and minus pi halves, so that the function is one to one and invertible. And so now the x values, the domain, are angles between plus or minus pi over two, and the output is all reals. Um, so for the arctan, or the inverse tangent, the x values are all real numbers, but the output is going to be bounded between plus or minus pi over 2. Good. And so this is our inverse tangent function. And actually, if you want to take a look at the inverse tangent function, it's kind of nice. It has, so where the original function has vertical asymptotes, at plus or minus pi over 2, the inverse tan uh, inverse function would have uh, horizontal asymptotes. And so then the function is kind of an elongated S. And so some people call this um, a sigmoidal function. 
because it looks like a stretched out S. Okay, but I've uh, I've uh, went on too big of a tangent here. <laughs> Let's get back to the derivative. Derivative of y equals the inverse tangent of x. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, I don't know what the derivative is, so I have to first rewrite it as tangent of y equal x, right? <clears throat> and so uh, now I can use implicit differentiation and the derivative of tangent is secant squared, so that would be secant squared y times dy over dx because that's a chain rule equals 1. Good. And so remember that the secant squared is 1 over cosine squared and so if I put it, if I take dy over dx to be 1 over secant squared, that's the same thing as cosine squared. Hmm. But I don't want the derivative to be in terms of y, I want it to be in terms of x. So what do we do? This defines a triangle. Which triangle? Well, again, the y could go on either side, but then the tangent is opposite, opposite over adjacent. So opposite, adjacent, and then the uh, hypotenuse would be 1 plus x squared, right? <clears throat> and so if um, y is equal to the inverse tangent of x, then dy over dx, do you see what it's going to be? Cosine squared of y, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared squared, or 1 over 1 minus x squared. Good. There it is. So that's how we differentiate the inverse trig functions. <clears throat> now the book is going to go crazy with these. Um, you, you should know how to uh, do this for all of the trig functions, but you don't need to memorize them all. I would memorize the, the uh, inverse sine and the inverse tangent, and then the other ones be able to compute as needed. All right, so that does it for the videos in section 3.5.